Yeah, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to uh, give an overview of uh, the plans and uh, future perspectives of the Newstar collaboration at FAIR. Um, the title is uh, Newstar Experiments on the way from GSI to FAIR. And uh, I will give you an overview from FRS GSI to Super FRS FAIR and dwell a bit into opportunities, experiments, and goals. You all are familiar with the, uh, with the uh, FAIR project and its scientific pillars. Uh, it will be constructed next to GSI. The existing facilities here um, will be uh, complemented by uh, the FAIR project, uh, which basically builds on four major collaborations, APA, CBM, NUSTA, and PANDA. And there is a large variety of physics topics and basic science which will be investigated and addressed. And uh, the NUSTA collaboration builds on the Super FRS at FAIR, on the existing facilities, and also on the experiments on super heavy element research ongoing at the uh, UNILAC. The uh, major challenge obviously is a civil construction of FAIR. Um, you see here what uh, this means. There is about five kilometers of high and ultra-high vacuum beam lines in total, and there is large equipment and material and mass to be moved until all this can be realized. So this is the present challenge, and people are working heavily on that. And uh, simultaneously, the Moonstar collaboration at FAIR is developing and constructing equipment for experiments at this uh, facility. Uh, here you see the major sub-collaborations of NUSTAR um, and some of the equipment what they are developing. NUSTAR collaboration is, uh, comprises uh, more than 800 scientists from uh, 184 institutes, many, many countries, and a major investment of about 150 million euros in total. Uh, the experiments comprise a large series of nuclear structure and astrophysics and super heavy element research topics. Um, there is a super FIS, the key instrument for isotope production, separation and identification, but also to be used for high resolution spectrometer experiments at relativistic beams. There is a super heavy element sub-collaboration aiming at physics and chemistry of super heavy elements. There is high spec D spec aiming at nuclear structure and uh, in beam gamma ray and decay spectroscopy. There is the ILIMA and uh, MATS experiment mainly aiming at uh, mass measurements in stored beams and with trapped beams. Uh, laser spectroscopy, and uh, there is a R3B co collaboration which will perform kinematically complete reactions with uh, high energy beams. And there is a two storage ring experiments, ELISA and EXCEL, aiming at uh, scattering experiments in inverse kinematics of electrons and of light uh, target elements, um, which is unfortunately not part of the modularized start version. The uh, timeline for what we call phase zero and phase one, you will see in a second what this is. Phase one is basically the start operation of FAIR, the commissioning of Super FRS after its uh, a longer installation and construction phase, um, and the start of operation at FAIR, uh, where the NUSTA experiments will be located. So the time between today and uh, the commissioning and start of FAIR experiments is what we call phase zero, and this is governed by the construction, civil construction mainly, and by the setup, commissioning, and pilot experiments at GSI and elsewhere using the new equipment. And this is basically how these phases are defined. Phase zero is R&D and construction and experiments at the present facilities, but already using new equipment, which is already ready and can be used for uh, experiments. Phase one is then when all this, simply speaking, will be moved to Super FIS at the FAIR site, and the core detectors, the start version, will be completed, and we can do first experiments with the FAIR Super FIS beams, and uh, will start an uh, interesting high-level program. Phase two is then the completion of the full modularized start version. Phase three is moderate upgrades, and phase four is then the uh, full completion of all experiments uh, which are in the baseline technical report from 2003. 
This means for the time being, we have to build on the existing facilities, beams at GSI and elsewhere, but I will concentrate on the GSI opportunities where we are using beams from Unilac and SIS to do experiments around the Coulomb barrier in the experimental hall and in the target hall at the fragment separator, storage ring and various uh, end stations. So this program builds, of course, not only on nuclear theory and has strong links and ties to the nuclear astrophysics, but it builds on the existing uh, major instruments and installations. There is uh, the ship and the Tusker separators and chemistry apparatus in the Unilac hall, and there is the FRS for exotic nuclei production and separation. Um, the ESR now complemented by the cry ring at the end here, and there is the R3B set up in KFC, uh, which is now being dismantled and replaced by the new R3B for FAIR. So to give you an overview on this uh, phase zero and the current beam time planning, there was a shutdown in 2015 for various upgrade measures and uh, Unilag renovation, RF, vacuum, and many other things. Hot labs, warm labs are being uh, upgraded and uh, refurbished. Um, there was some beam time in quarter three and four for Unilag experiments only. In 2016, this basically continued this upgrade and renovation work and there were some Unilag experiments and uh, SIS beams for detector tests available, um, beam developments and accelerator developments in total 12 and 7 weeks respectively. Next year there will be a complete shutdown of all accelerator facilities because we are changing the control and operation system. This uh, after 30 years has to be changed because hardware is simply no longer available for the controls. And uh, then from 2018 on, we will run five to four months of uh, beam times every year to do a concentrated but high level and highly visible uh, scientific research program. I start off with the super heavy element research, which you know very well and which builds, uh, which is part of uh, New Star at FAIR. Um, from the beginning, but has now been also formally approved by the Board of Representatives. And uh, the main focus, due to the limited beam time which is available, we have stopped the element search uh, and synthesis experiments for new elements, um, is the synthesis of new isotopes, nuclear structure, atomic physics, and nuclear chemistry experiments, relatively short and concentrated experiments, which can be done in relatively short beam time amounts, but provide interesting and uh, high-level data. You see here some highlights from uh, physics and chemistry in GSI. We have uh, strong groups aiming uh, or performing both programs. Um, and besides the new elements which have been created at GSI, there is in the last years also a large um, outcome in extremely interesting uh, experiments and uh, experimental results, also uh, in, uh, in uh, isotope search and uh, confirmation experiment. And uh, there is many science, nature papers and other physical review letters uh, which uh, underline the importance of this program. And uh, I just want to uh, convey you to the uh, talks of Alexander Yakushev on the chemistry, Valeria Pershina on the uh, theoretical chemistry results, and uh, Premaditya Chetri on the uh, Nobelium and laser spectroscopy results. Cannot go into details here, but uh, just want to give a brief outlook to uh, future activities. This, uh, both programs will continue in full swing, um, and the goal is to study atomic structure, also using new chemical compounds, which are more sensitive to the details of the inner configuration of the atoms. Um, there will be chemistry and mass spectroscopy experiments, um, and uh, maybe one can then open also up a new period in the periodic table. Um, 
new isotopes and transfer reaction studies, and then the way is open to new elements once this new superconducting CW Linac is uh, available and in operation at GSI will provide CW beams. This means higher duty factor than presently and uh, also increased intensities. It's presently under construction, is uh, almost halfway um, and will then be in operation from 2022 onwards and uh, accelerate ions of all elements up to an energy of about 7 MeV per nucleum to reach the Coulomb barriers. The high-spec D-spec collaboration, as I said, is also a big collaboration comprising many scientists, institutions, major investments, is largely funded already and uh, is a modular setup where you see different elements already here, a total absorption spectrometer. LUCA was already used at the FRS for identification in connection with the AGATA start version, AIDA for decay spectroscopy uh, experiments and Berlin for uh, neutron detection. So these sub subsystems are already in operation and are presently be used at Ganil, at uh, IFIN in Romania, Jevascula, Riken, and of course, as soon as we have beams again, will be used at the Fair Phase Zero at GSI. The major goal of this collaboration is to study the R process and in particular the uh, vicinity of the third R process uh, abundance peak where uh, conflicting data exists and it's very difficult to reach these heavy isotopes uh, with sufficient precision and purity. This can be done with the new instruments, what we have. We have done experiments with one atom per day already, very uh, decisive and conclusive results. And this will provide a lot of data depending on intensities and phases. We will go down along this N equal 126 shell further and further. Already in phase one, we can reach territory of new isotopes which are not even known today. So this will be the benefit of the new detectors and uh, also at uh, the storage ring um, branch there is new opportunities for radioactive ion beams using the cry ring which is presently under commissioning. First beams have already reached the cry ring but have not been stored. This is the plan for next year and for 2018. And, um, and this gives opportunities to study bare and highly charged ions at an uh, unusual energy domain of the order of 100 kilo electron volt per mass unit up to an MeV per U approximately. Uh, and this opens up a new window for atomic interaction studies, surface ion interaction in its extremely high fields. And also for the nuclear physics, it opens up the Gamov window re uh, regime for direct capture reactions of, for instance, uh, P gamma, uh, which is relevant for the RP process. And later on, this will be extended uh, after primary beam pioneering experiments will be extended to radioactive ion beams as well. Scattering of stored beams of internal targets is a pilot experiment which, has, uh, which is underway at GSI, also builds on new detector systems in the ultra-high vacuum of 10 to the minus 11 millibar or so, bringing silicon detectors and silly detectors into this ultra-high vacuum environment. And this is inverse kinematic experiments where the projectile beams, stable or unstable isotopes, here we did a pilot measurement with nickel 56, doubly magic, uh, are scattered off a hydrogen target in inverse kinematics and the recoils are collected and here you see beautiful data as I think uh, from the uh, elastic scattering of nickel 56 allowing to determine charge and matter radii up to almost the second minimum. Um, the next step, 2018 onwards, will be uh, a kind of uh, similar experiment, but then replacing the hydrogen target by helium target and doing alpha-alpha prime measurements to study the isoscalar giant monopole resonances, and we are pretty sure that this will provide data of uh, similar quality. The uh, R3B setup I mentioned already is under construction for fair phase zero. Some of the modules we have seen of the Neuland detector are already in use in Riken and uh, have delivered beautiful data. This is optimized, first of all, for uh, 
large aperture and uh, large acceptance um, and high rigidity beams. And secondly, for the Neuland detector for neutron detection with high multiplicities, high means three, four, five or so, uh, which can be simultaneously be detected. Uh, there is also a Khalifa in uh, cesium iodide a uh, calorimeter type detector surrounding the target together with an inner silicon tracker for the fast recoils, high energy recoils. The large aperture dipole magnet here coming from Saclay being delivered to GSI and now already installed and being commissioned in the KFC will be complemented then by new detectors, a proton arm, a heavy fragment arm and of course the Neuland detector. Installation is ongoing, a big collaboration is behind, major investments have been done, Germany, Russia and other countries are the major partners in this and this will allow to study a completely new physics program in the KFC already from 2018 onwards. I just want to give you a glimpse what is new about um, for instance, the dipole strength distribution in very heavy neutron rich systems at the highest energy, a GeV per nucleon or so, nowhere else in the world possible, uh, will be studied. And the high energies gives uh, the opportunity uh, for doing um, electric dipole and quadrupole response of nuclei. Interestingly, um, what we know today, for instance, helium-6 studied at 240 MeV per nucleon uh, corresponds to an equivalent photon spectrum of uh, 6 MeV photons or so, um, whereas predictions go up to 100 MeV. And this can be studied then at R3b to a much higher domain. So what we know presently is about up to here, whereas this complete part predicted by theory cannot even be proven today. This will be possible in two years. I want to give you another example for completely new equipment, what uh, was non-existent before and gives new opportunities for experiments. This is a so-called ion catcher at GSI. Uh, the key device is a gas felt cryogenic stopping cell here operating at uh, remarkable um, parameters here, has a high aerial weight of about six milligram per square centimeter helium. It provides very stable operation, tested over many weeks already online, has a high stopping and extraction efficiency of uh, about 80% at very short extraction times of the order of 25 milliseconds or even lower. And this provides new data and new experiments uh, for isol type experiments as are planned for MUTs and LASPEC at the Super FRS, the low energy branch at FAIR. Um, but for the time being, we do commissioning. We have uh, some diagnostics and uh, can do measurements, for instance, on decays and masses uh, using a multiple reflection time of light mass spectrometer, uh, which can be used also for isobar and for isomere separation. And this sense adds complementarily to the fragment separator with its uh, isotopic resolution. Um, the basis of this multiple reflection time of flight mass spectrometer here, I just give one short example here on the uh, mass resolving power. As it increases with the number of turns, ions are injected from an RF trap here. Uh, this mirror type here, uh, deflect uh, analyzer is opened uh, and then closed when the ions are in. They go back and forth like in a pendulum and at some point they are ejected and the time of flight between the extraction from the trap and the time of flight to the detector is measured. This is a measure for the mass and uh, how mass resolving power increases. You see here as a number of turns. Um, so it goes up to about 450,000 or so on relatively short measurement times of few milliseconds. So um, this is uh, an interesting performance and uh, will provide new experiments. Here is a scheme of the overall setup. You see the copy again. Um, and here is, uh, yeah, isol type beams for experiments after in-flight separation. And uh, I give one example where this can be used for isomere separation. You see the example of uh, polonium-211 arriving at the final silicon detector in the ground and excited state. And when you properly switch this uh, extraction mirror, then uh, you can suppress the ground state and just the isomer get through and then you have an isomerically clean beam for pure spectroscopy available. 
Another example for excellent Russian-Polish-German collaboration is the expert setup uh, exotic particle emission and radioactivity studies by tracking detectors. Um, this aims at exotic multiple neutron or multiple proton decays uh, to study the borderline between uh, resonant behavior and continuum response of nuclear matter interaction of nucleons with the continuum at the borderline of stability. And the key to this experiment is high resolution angular measurements um, of all the decay products and high resolution momentum measurements uh, using uh, the fragment separator. There are several new components which are under construction in Dubna and GSI. Radiation hard detectors, um, a Gardast uh, um, gamma decay array, and uh, tracking detectors here for the outgoing particles, giving a few micrometer resolution, and also a new concept for high-resolution angular neutron detection measurements, uh, the so-called NURAT detector is underway. The optical TPC from the Warsaw group will be used, and of course there is uh, intense simulation and uh, modulation work ongoing, modeling. Um, these new components can be used or have been used already um, at the FRS, at GSI, the OTPC and the GARDAST components and the uh, micro uh, tracker of silicon. There will be more uh, completed by the beginning of the super FRS, but for the time being, from the experiments, the pilot experiments we have done so far, there is quite a long list of uh, papers coming out, and there are also plans for future studies in the phase zero. This means from 2018 onwards, which can be done already now using the most exotic beams at the FRS. Finally, I want to mention another type of experiments which is new, was not done before, and which is uh, specific for GSI, building on high energies and high um, momentum resolution of the FRS. Uh, this is hypernuclear studies, where strange nucleons, hyperons, are attached to stable or, in the future, unstable uh, nuclei, and this is a new probe uh, which doesn't undergo the Pauli principle and uh, the hyperon can dwell deeply into the nucleus and is a new probe for structure, for lifetime measurements and others. Uh, production starts uh, to become at reasonable cross-sections uh, in excess of a GeV per nucleon uh, beam energy um, and uh, Taka Saito and collaborators uh, investigated or even found a new mechanism which is quite universal, um, how hyperons can uh, stick to the uh, pre-fragments in the hot collision zone uh, when the uh, fragments are produced. And uh, this has a reasonable large cross-section of the order of microbands, so this is not very exotic and can easily, relatively easily be produced. But what you need is a high energy and also the high resolution to do spectroscopy, um, for instance, to measure lifetimes or also binding energies of the order of an MeV, which is unprecedented. Present uh, experiments and data, which are partly very many decades, decades old, uh, are much lower resolution and precision than this one here, and uh, this will open a completely new field, basically, for new studies uh, with a new probe. There is also a contribution by Alexander Botwina this week. Um, yeah, this basically shows the principle where we use primary or secondary beams uh, from the first section of the FRS impinging on a production target. The lifetimes are of the order of few centimeters only so that uh, the fragments, uh, the hyperons decay immediately inside a fragment, releasing a pion which is tagged together with the outgoing fragment and uh, this gives them the remarkable resolution. So, to conclude, I hope I convinced you and at least I have given you a few examples that uh, the essential components for the phase zero at GSI FAIR are available for an interesting experiment program of NUSTAR at GSI. 
Um, the physics program will take advantage in particular of the new detector systems, of uh, the peculiarities and uh, opportunities arising from the high energy beams and the high resolution spectrometer setups, and last but not least, due to the strong involvement and activity of the NUSTAR collaboration, um, just to say, the NUSTAR equipment and end stations for the phase zero, when everything will move to the Super FRS at FAIR will be ready well in time, and uh, then we will move to the FAIR site. So we are hoping in the meantime for a great outcome of the NUSTA collaboration. Thanks. Thank you very much, Christoph. Perfectly in time and very wide overview of the developing complex set. G cipher. Please, we uh, have time for questions. Yes, please. Look for the double lambda hypernuclei. And how far with respect to the nuclear masses can you go? This we have to see. The cross-sections for double strangeness production increase at 2.4 GeV per nucleon or so. So this is out of reach at GSI. It may be in reach for light beams, um, lithium, carbon, maybe. We can reach up to 2 GeV per nucleon and then can create double strangeness with reasonable cross-sections still. Uh, it drops. Alexander should know better, two orders of magnitude, so you are then on the 10 nanobarn region or so, which is reasonable because we are using thick targets, say a centimeter thick or so, four grams of beryllium, so you have a lot of uh, interactions. Um, so it's in reach, but of course we will concentrate on the uh, single lambda nuclei first, um, and then at FAIR, with the higher energies, we have higher rigidity available from the SIS-100, then cross-sections are more favorable. And we go stepwise, from simple to more complex. Thank you. More questions? But to answer the second part ah, okay. of the question, um, since the cross-sections are reasonably high, you can go away from stability. And, and this is a new dimension. I mean, previous experiments are done with pion or kaon beams. Uh, so they rely on stable target materials. This here is a kind of inverse kinematics and a different mechanism in peripheral uh, reactions, which is universal. So you can produce a secondary beam, separate it, and let this beam interact to produce the strangeness. Yes, please. I thank you. Uh, Christoph, what the, uh, your uh, beam uh, time is not enough uh, for continuous uh, uh, experiment on synthesis of super heavy element. I mean, the, for example, go to 119, go 120, using the titanium beam and so on. What's your opinion? But you need at least full beam time per year for such experiments. We had this discussion a couple of years ago when it, was, when it became clear that we have uh, only reduced beam time available. Personnel has been redirected to FAIR, money has been saved for FAIR, and uh, we end up with something like three to four months of beam time every year. At this point it became clear that we have to decide whether we put everything in on one goal, namely the new element search, or whether we explore the other opportunity at GSI, namely doing many experiments, laser spectroscopy, mass spectrometry, chemistry, decay spectroscopy. We have all these instruments available, and uh, there is, you have seen this when you look a bit closer into the uh, list of publications, there is a number of uh, extremely highly interesting experiments and uh, results coming out in the last years from relatively short experiments, meaning one, two, maybe three weeks, but we have a series of them. So this is a kind of
compromise, but I think it's a good compromise, uh, because we have students, we need the training, we need data, we need publications, and I think with this uh, strategy, um, we are well underway uh, in this, under the present constraints. The situation will change once the CW Linux is available, which will be completely independent. We are presently having serious discussions. It is most likely, or it turns out, that there is no other way. Unilac will be optimized for short pulses for fear. This is the end of the super heavy program. Many other experiments, uh, like the uh, biology, material research, plasma physics, they can still live with, say, one or two millisecond pulses. The super heavies cannot. So it's obvious that we need to continue the construction and completion of the, super, of the uh, CW Linux. And then with a the high duty cycle and higher intensity, then we will be back in business and like to collaborate with the Xi factory. Thank you very much, Christoph. Let me thank the speaker.